Welcome back to the School Cast, and it's Tim and Jacko. And today, Halloween special, it's the zombie handstand. So it's a Halloween special and it's how to do a zombie handstand. Now we're not massive fans of, of, of Halloween. If you come around my house trick-or-treating, if you can do one of these and that's your trick, then there might be a chance you're going to get a treat. But I guarantee it would have come out of a Nutribullet and it might be something which is gluten-free, sugar-free, avocado-based. <laughs> Maybe not whatever he wants at Halloween, but still, a better treat. for you. Exactly. Keep your teeth in check. Anyway, Tim, tell them what we're going to show them today. So we've got three different variations depending on where you're at. And the first one is called the Berserker Zombie. Anyone can do that. It just requires a little bit of, uh, what's the right word? Explosive. Ex excitement. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a zombie that's really going to scare you. Yeah, that one. It, well, yeah. But, but probably one you're going to get away from because there's not too much back. Yeah, they're all. a bit out of control. Yeah. That's the Berserker Zombie. The second one is a headbanger. And this zombie is probably threat level number two. It's got a little bit of something, but needs a little bit of support. So it might be running after you and it might have to have it. It probably got a stick or something like that. So it's like a... It, it's or it's head on the floor. It's an assisted zombie. So yeah. you can probably get away from that one. The level three zombie... You've got to be careful. Yeah, the triple threat. Precision, stealth, and it flipping backs itself. So this is the one that you really want to have a keep your eye out for, <laughs> stay clear of on Halloween, and but we'll be inside probably cowering away from kids outside dressed as Freddy Krueger anyway. So, <laughs> so we're going to give you the demonstrations then, but we're also going to give you a few little um, bits of help, uh, some exercises, so that you can build up to um, some of these progressions. And it's as over with us, it's progressive and we're going to give you the coaching points for them. And we've kind of packaged this up within a zombie handstand, but this is actually help all your handstand training. So yeah. it's worth getting in for some general practice if you're working towards this particular move. And it's a bit of fun. Let's have some fun. Let's go. So the Berserker, this one, as we said, is one that um, is going to scare you potentially, but um, there's not under much crush. He's going to drag himself forward, get his chest through, and then he's going to try for one. <laughs> Just kick off. <laughs> so yeah, the Berserker. He is scary, but he's not under control, so you can get away from him. Good thing I've been training calves recently. So next up, we've got the head banger zombie. Same start position, like we said, but um, this one is going to be under a little bit more control, so you've got to watch out. But the position comes forward the same, but then it's going to be a headstand position. So the head gives him a bit of point of contact. So he's then in that position there. And if we can, we're looking to come back down under control and back through. So we can see a nice control. But like we say, probably not quite as scary because you ain't got to run away from it. <laughs> so the headbanger, um, although I said because of that more control, you're potentially uh, not as scary. But actually, we found out that it had a bit of bite to it. But it needs that support of the head on the ground, so it is a, bit, a little bit easier to get away from. But the final one, the triple threat, he's stealth like he needs to look after me. It's got the control all the way through. Um, it's going up into, without the head on the floor, almost that Stevenson chair from that piked frog stand position. It's got the control all the way up to the top. And then we're looking at having then that same control down to drive back out. You've got under so much control, you might not even hear or see him coming. Watch out for this one. <laughs> so this is a tip for the Berserker Zombie. We're going to use the wall for a bit of support to give us some confidence in getting out of that tuck position. So Jacko's got his hands on the floor. Normally we'd kick up with the back leg straight and we would use the heel to try and find the wall in our wall kick, kick up handstand. However, for the Berserker, we're going to bring it a little bit tighter. We're going to come nice and close. He's going to come into that position. He's just going to give himself a real strong kick up and then let's explode out. So as you start to push the legs up, explode the hips high and then push out with the arms. The wall's there if you need it. If you're going to bail out into this position and you feel like you're going to go over the top, all that's going to happen is Jacko can just bring his legs to the side and he can pretty much there get his hands on the floor at the same time with his feet. Safe position, not very zombie-like, but safe and you live to see the 1st of November. And you can, you can add the, uh, the zombie effects once you've exploded yeah. it. We would like to have some sound. <laughs> so if you want to give, ah! give the headbanger zombie a go, then you need to be able to get the headstand nailed down so you're comfortable pulling from this straight position 
up into that headstand position. So Jack is going to start to activate through the core, keep the midsection tight. The trick here is to pull the chest between the hands. Then when you get to this position, palms on the floor, keep the head on the ground, and then just start to use your hips to pull your feet through. Lots of pushing the strength down through the shoulders at this point to create that nice headstand. Those of you that have practiced that will have that bit in the locker. It's just about sinking those two things together. And for real effect, for the extra, extra threat of the zombie, you need to get back into your start position. Beautifully done there. So one of the real tricks of all of these, but particularly for the triple threat zombie, is being able to get back down from the start position. So once you've got up there, try and stabilize at the top. If you're not too confident with your handstand, don't spend too long there, but this is the real key to getting back to finishing off the move. So Jacko is gonna now start to lower down. He's gonna bring himself and reverse the handstand movement. So the feet are gonna come off the wall. The big objective with this one is to try and get that head going forward. You've got to start to shift some weight over the hands so that you can balance out the weight as it comes down from the hips and the lower body. Really beautifully controlled back down there and he slides himself back into his zombie start position. So that's it, that's that, our zombie hands up with both you'll be pleased to see back in one piece. Um, yeah, Halloween is, as I said, not really a bag, but that's a bit of fun that you can have and make it a little bit more lighthearted, I hope. Yeah, and we put this out a few days early before Halloween, so you can see it, get some practice in, and then on Halloween we want to see your zombie handstands, so uh, post them on uh, your social media, use, tag us in them, they're at Schoolcast Linux, but then use hashtag SOC, standing for Schoolcast Linux, so zombie, so SOC zombie. And we want to see those and look forward to seeing them. Massive bonus points for fancy dress. <laughs> yes. Put that out there. Because okay, so if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do that so you don't miss out on any of our content. We've got our free beginners guide. If you're one of, everyone's got it, so you should have it by now. But if you haven't, that's down by there. And for one of our other tutorials, click up there by me. Class dismissed.